Hello everyone and thank you for choosing NG Preparations to study for your economics course. Today we will be covering the section of the syllabus of competitive markets, specifically looking at demand. So the first topic in chapter 2 is competitive markets, demand and supply. So a competitive market is defined as a market that is composed of many buyers and sellers who act independently, none of whom has any ability to influence the price of the product. So we assume that because there are so many buyers and sellers in a market, no one really has the ability to overall change the price of a certain good. In a perfectly competitive market, without government intervention, the only thing that determines quantity and price, or equilibrium, is demand and supply. Demand is the quantity of a good or service a consumer is willing and able to purchase at different possible prices during a particular time period, ceteris paribus. So we said in our previous video, ceteris paribus is all things remaining equal. Now the key parts of this definition is that consumers must be willing and able to purchase a good for them to count as being part of demand. They must have the money to buy it and they must have the inclination. So we also want to distinguish between demand and quantity demanded because quantity demanded is the quantity of a good or service a consumer is willing and able to purchase at a particular price, whereas demand is at all possible prices. And we will come back to this when we're looking at non-price determinants of demand. Now the law of demand says that as a price of a good increases, the quantity demanded of the good falls, ceteris paribus. And this makes sense if we remember back to our assumption that consumers are utility maximizing, meaning that they want to get the most benefit out of the money that they're using. We also say that the reason that the demand curve is downward sloping, and this reflects that quantity demanded falls as the price of a good increases, is because of the income effect. The more expensive a good is, the less my income can buy you that good. So therefore, the income effect results in me being able to buy less of the good. So quantity demanded of that good falls. Another reason is because of the international substitution effect. So if the price of a good increases, then I might decide to then import a good from another country. So the quantity demanded of the good whose price has gone up will not get as much quantity demanded because people will switch um, to other substitutes. Another key definition to keep in mind is marginal utility theory. So marginal utility theory says that marginal benefit falls as quantity consumed increases. So if you can think of a scenario where if I buy one ice cream, I get a certain amount of benefit from eating that ice cream. But by the time I get a second ice cream, the benefit that I get from that second ice cream is less. By the third ice cream, it's even less. By the fourth ice cream, it's even less. So in other words, the marginal benefit is falling the more I consume. So that results in the idea that a consumer will only be induced to buy an extra unit of a good if its price falls. I will only be willing to buy that fifth ice cream if that fifth ice cream is much less expensive than that first ice cream. And that is another reason that we see a downward sloping demand curve. Now, what are some of the non-price determinants of demand? Because obviously we know that price will affect quantity demanded, but what will affect demand? These determinants will shift the demand curve as a whole. The first factor that can affect demand is changes in income. So obviously, if people's incomes increase, then they might be able to buy more of a good regardless of the price of the good. So with an increase in income, we assume that the demand curve will shift to the right. However, this is only true depending on the nature of the good. Normal goods are goods like, for instance, cars, which when income increases, people demand more of them. But then there are inferior goods. So for instance, bus tickets. As people's incomes increase, then people won't buy as many bus tickets because they would prefer to buy private transport. So when there's an increase in income, for normal goods, the demand for normal goods will shift to the right, but when there's, when there's an increase in income, the demand for inferior goods will shift to the left. The second non-price determinant of demand is preferences and tastes. So a good might become more popular over time simply because there's a change in people's preferences. So for instance, if it becomes more trendy 
um, to own a certain style of sneaker, then that will then shift demand to the right for that. The third determinant is prices of re related goods. So there might be substitute goods and there might be complementary goods. So what are consumer substitute goods? Consumer substitutes are two goods that provide the same purpose, so they can be interchanged. So for instance, tea and coffee. So for substitute goods, if the price of good X increases, then we would expect the demand of its substitute good, good Y, to increase because consumers will switch from good X to good Y. So for instance, we would expect that an increase in the price of Coca-Cola would result in an increase in the demand of Pepsi, its substitute good. Consumer complements, on the other hand, are goods that are used together. So for instance, milk and coffee or ink and printers. So for complements, a fall in the price of one good causes an increase in the demand for another good. The last determinant of demand that we will be looking at is demographic changes. So for instance, over time, the population of elderly people might grow, and therefore this can create a greater gray market or gray economy. So if there's an increase in the population of elderly people, we might expect there to be an increase in the demand of healthcare services or adult diapers. So to summarize, you should have learned from the video the following syllabus points. To explain the negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. To explain that a demand curve represents the relationship between the price and quantity demanded of a product. Explain how factors including changes in income, preferences, prices of related goods, and demographic changes may change demand. And to distinguish between movements along the demand curves and shifts the demand curve. Or in other words, the difference between quantity demanded and demand. Thank you so much for watching and please stay tuned for our next video on supply and competitive markets.